Have you ever wondered what you should do when you're really awkward in life? That's what we'll talk about today. Awkward interests me, he said. At least when you're feeling awkward, you are always thinking. When you're feeling fabulous, for example, rare occurrence that it may be, you stop thinking altogether, which gets you into all kinds of trouble. Elizabeth Brundage, the doctor's wife. Today we're going to talk about the book, The Science of Why We're Socially Awkward and Why That's Awesome, by Tai Tashiro, Ph.D., He writes a lot of books about happiness, and in this particular case, you could tell that he really loved the topic of awkwardness. I think because he grew up awkward himself, and he felt like his parents gave him the proper skills, the proper way of going about things, to get over the awkwardness. He says that one thing that's interesting about awkward people is that they're all really interested in details, that what the things that makes people awkward is the fact that we're so passionate, and I consider myself one too, if you haven't realized that, passionate, detailed people about particular topics. And I think what he's hinting at is that maybe we're all on the ADD track, somewhere on the autism track, but we're all just obsessed with something. And that obsession, that look of detail can sometimes make us more socially awkward than what most people feel. And he said that what happens when you're socially awkward, it makes you hard to navigate social settings because you don't know what's going to happen. You can't really predict what's going to happen. And you feel like it's a maybe an area where you haven't really quite mastered it. He says that awkwardness can make people feel left out. But the good part about awkwardness is that those people are so good at picking up patterns, looking at details They almost become little scientists in their own lives. So if they can go into a direction to teach them, they will lose the awkwardness that makes them feel so separated from people. He says that a kid, awkward people did unusual things. He says, quote, like take the toaster part to see how it works or ask incessant questions about how birds know to fly south in the winter or become fascinated by how hybrid engines work. I think it's interesting because I always thought all kids did that. But then when I started thinking about the kids around me, I found out it was pretty much just me. I was that kid who had a million and one questions. I'd go to the library because I wanted to know why the sky got dark at night. I took apart my grandmother's light switch ones because I wanted to know how it worked. Little did I know that I probably could have killed myself had I touched the wrong wire with the wrong screwdriver. But I was always interested in how everything worked. I took everything I had apart. My dad was an Air Force mechanic, and so he would bring back little engines for me out of different machinery that was being tossed out by the Air Force base that we were on and let me just take things apart. He wanted to teach me how to learn how machinery worked, how motors worked. And so I was always taking things apart. But here was the thing that he always made me do. He always made me put the things back together. And then when I got to driving age, he showed me how a car worked. And back in those days, cars weren't so much computers that you could actually fully take apart a lot of things in the car and put it back together again, which made me understand how engines worked, how a car worked. I remember I was somewhere and the car accelerator broke. Whatever was connecting the accelerator to the engine just completely snapped. But because I understood it so well, I was able to rig together a new method of getting that accelerator to connect back into the engine, and I was able to drive home. (laughs) It wasn't a permanent solution and wasn't good looking, but it totally worked. And so I think that for me as an awkward person, my dad taught me how to take that incessant knowledge learning and put it towards good patterns. He helped me learn to do better and how to look at books and learn about all the questions I had. But then comes the problem about the social part, that when you're not very good with people, that you're what they call the wallflower because you're just sitting on the side of the room pretending like you're a potted plant and not really talking to anyone. I mean, that was me in every party. I wasn't good in large groups of people If we had a dance in my school or some social event with Girl Scouts, I was a person who didn't necessarily know how to get past this. 
But luckily, I think my dad tried to teach me good social skills. He tried to give me a chance in dealing with people better. And he tried to give me some ideas about what the future held. He said, you know what? You're going to struggle with people and maybe even particularly boys. But I tell you what, that when you get older, all of this is going to get fixed and you're going to learn how to deal with people and people are going to learn better how to deal with you. And he was absolutely right. But because of the way he instructed me to be my own person, I think it gave me a chance to learn about other people. And eventually, once we got out of the childhood era, I was able to connect with people on a real basis. The one thing about me was, is that I always noticed that when I would hang out at my grandmother's house, I was always so good with all the older people. My grandmother lived in an apartment that was just filled with retirement people, even though it wasn't technically a retirement building. But I ended up playing board games with them. They would take me to the park and we would talk. And I connected with older people really well. I just had a hard time connecting with people my own age particularly when it came to boys. I was pretty terrible about it. Facebook has been kind of enlightening to me because now I'm Facebook friends with a lot of people that I knew when I was growing up on the military base. And you know what was funny is that they're just people too. I learned after a while that they had struggles, they had concerns, and I just never knew it. But what he gave me, my dad gave me a chance was to learn how it was to understand people and to spend time learning about people. He talks about how his parents instilled in him ideas of how social structures worked and how to get along with people without losing, he says, himself. And I felt that that was pretty true for me, too, is that I learned through my dad about how I could be me, but not bow to social peer pressure, not do things necessarily because everyone else was doing it. He tried to let me know that sometimes when people do something, they're doing it for pretty stupid reasons and not fall for whatever it is that they're thinking of doing, but to think it out for myself. He got me involved in Girl Scouts, which helped me find friends and helped me learn about other people, go camping and do things I liked with other people. And it was probably necessary for me. I got to meet people out of all sorts of different social circles on the military base. One of the things that is a little bit different when you grow up in a military base is that as compared to being rich kids or poor kids or popular kids and not popular kids, it was officers versus non-officers. But being in scouting let me learn that everyone is interesting and everyone has their own struggles. And Girl Scouts taught me how I could learn how to be closer to people, how I could talk to people about the things that they were interested in and I was interested together. And so it helped me in my social structures. And I think what this book is talking about is his parents too helped him to learn how to meet people, even though he was that person who was struggling, awkward, maybe even nerd. He was helped by his parents to get the social contacts that he really needs. And he likes to remind us all that we are all awkward at times. Everybody is awkward just a little bit. But what can you do if you're constantly in that awkward situation? And he said that, you know, when you're growing up, you sort of learned that kids got along with each other. He said whether they were stoners or the polo shirt crew, all these different labels that existed. But he said the social death kiss was being a nerd. I can tell you that is absolutely true. He said, if you were into Dungeons and Dragons or the clarinet, you were just kind of doomed because you were unusual and kids like normal things. You know, kids don't want to be tagged sometimes with someone who might be awkward. And I think the thing that I learned in all of this, too, what Romy and Michelle in the movie Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion learned is that it was the nerds who ended up making all the money being the good catches, and being fun people to be around. And maybe that's why it's one of my favorite movies. But you kind of learn, and I learned this in college, that you finally find your right people. Even in high school, I realized that a lot of people didn't like nerds. So I kept my whole Star Wars, Raider of the Lost Ark thing quiet. I didn't tell anybody. And I would talk about things that they were interested in talking about. 
you know, trying to talk about rock concerts and Packers and other sports teams because that's the things that they were interested in. But I would go to Chicago, hang out with my grandmother and go see Raiders Lost Ark the weekend it opened because that was the kind of nerd I was. But I didn't make it the forefront of my personality, primarily because my dad taught me how to talk about things people were interested in and learn how other people are interesting in their own way. He says that one of the ways that we can get better as awkward people or maybe nerds is to learn how to focus on areas that fall outside our natural interests and learn something that's new. He said that there's nothing wrong with being awkward, but we have to realize that building relationships with other people sometimes means that that person, that one individual is just not really interested in the things we're interested in. And how can we build a relationship based on a third interest that maybe they're interested in or that we get interested in together? He talked a little bit about how sometimes awkwardness is associated with autism or Asperger's syndrome, where the social skills aren't developed, primarily because the communication pathways are not quite structured in the brain the way that they should be. And that part of the problem is, is that people on the spectrum have some trouble with nonverbal communication. They don't understand it. Sometimes they miss nuance in what people are saying and they get frustrated. And so then they just tune everybody out when instead they should be kind of diving in and trying to learn and stretch a little bit so that they can understand other people. He says that at some point, too, their interests might get really narrowed and they're not interested in anything else. And so in order for a person to kind of get out of that structure, they have to learn to change their focus, learn to become interested in other things that they may not be. I found for me that scouting and going out in nature and camping was a way for me to relate to other people. I also found books were also a very good way to relate to other people. But you know what my one superpower was in grade school and in high school? When it came time for school-related activities, um, like we used to have a social studies competition where we'd split into two teams and then we would answer questions based on what happened in news events in the past week. You know what? I got asked first to be on the teams. When it ever came to debates or it came to researching a paper, suddenly it became very popular. And so I was able to use my ability to research to make friends too. But he says that sometimes when you have social anxiety, personality disorders, or maybe even introversion, maybe we're not even talking about being on the spectrum. We're talking about someone who's just very introverted you have to learn how you can take things that you're good at. You don't want to become someone else, but can you change what you're good at, the things that you're really great at, and find just a few people who can be your friend, who that you can start having a good relationship with, and learning how to be good in social situations. You can learn how you can deal with other people you know, better if you can just break through to just find those first few friends and break through that awkwardness, that introvertism, you might be able to take and learn better about how you can stop feeling so awkward, know that you have friends, and start building on what you learn about other people with your friends. He said that his parents helped him out on some of the missing skills. And what I thought was really ingenious about this is they created a chart of emotions and responses. So if you're the kind of person who doesn't really know how to deal with certain emotions or responses people have, he had this really neat chart that would basically help remind him what it is that he was supposed to do if this happened. I'm pretty good at this. I'm pretty good at reading people and being with people in social activities now. I wasn't as a kid, but he said that when we have that chart that tells us how we can react to certain things, it will help us remember off the top of our heads and quickly what it is we need to do. You want to freak me out? Cry in front of me. I don't know how to deal with crying. If anyone cries in front of me, I almost completely fall apart. This whole cool, calm thing I have going on in my life, I completely get disrupted in it. It just destroys everything that I know. And so I've started to try to learn individual things to say when someone cries. What can you say that will help the situation? You know, instead of 
stop crying or please don't do that. Or could you just please go over there while you're, you know, you could say all sorts of really terrible things. But instead, if you have some reactions to emotions that you're not particularly good at, you might be able to quickly then help that situation instead of just feeling awkward, leaving the room or whatever it is that you did when you're feeling so awkward. I know, too, that people get very upset when there are people who are angry in the room or people who are really upset, you know, fighting people, you know, whatever it is that you have. And so I thought this chart of emotional responses when X happens, I'm going to do Y was really good. And so if you find that there are situations that you don't deal with properly, maybe a similar kind of chart would really help you to engage in a situation that you're not particularly good at. He says that you should always try to focus when you're trying to be likable on three basic traits, being fair, things like taking turns and sharing with people and just knowing, you know, how to uh, be a balanced human being, to be kind, you know, give something back, contribute more than that person contributed to them, do something nice for someone who's just having a really horrible day, and being loyal. And that means supporting people through good times, through back times, but it also means being loyal to yourself. But he said that if you can learn fairness, kindness, and loyalty, that will help you a long way in becoming a likable human being and not feeling so awkward all the time. He says, too, that you have to teach people who feel like they're awkward. You know, first of all, they may be bullied at time or they may not know how to respond. And so that you can teach people what roles other people plays in their lives. Like, what do you do if a bully said something terrible to you? Well, my dad taught me early on that, you know what? If a bully says something to me, I don't really care because they're a jerk and I don't care what they say. But if a teacher says something to me that's upsetting, well, then I have to take that in a different place. Maybe talk to my parents about it. You know, so also having a list of the various people and what to do when they do something that is hurtful or something that you even perceive as hurtful, how you can respond to it will help you to be less awkward, too. Again, some people's opinions matter and some people's opinions don't matter. Then he said that that list of if then statements would be something like ways that you can treat a situation better. So he gave this list of three columns in this chart, negative manifestations, the awkward trait, or positive manifestations. So if something happens that upsets you, are you asocial? That's the negative thing. I'm just over here reading my book, just leave me alone. You know, that's a narrow interest. I'm not going to be involved in whatever you're doing. And then a positive way is being focused. And maybe you can be focused on the problem that's at hand. Or maybe you can be focused on helping someone else in the classroom do better if it's a bully who's treating you poorly. Says so something like a bad manifestation is low empathy or compulsive behavior, while the awkward trait might be being non-social and removing yourself from the situation, becoming obsessive with something, when instead a more positive reaction might be looking into some unusual details and helping people out with what's going on. So if there's some sort of struggle that's going on in a college classroom that you're having, instead of not caring or just tuning out entirely, maybe your ability to tease out details and look for some unusual nuances in something, you could turn it to sort of help the situation be better. He says that teaching kids or teaching each other these social skills and manners and how to have these rules will help bring someone who's feeling like they're awkward back into the mainstream. So I guess this podcast is a little bit interesting because a lot of this book is talking about what to do with kids. But it was also talking about what he felt helped bring him out of these situations where his awkwardness could have become negative and he brought himself into a really good place. And so I thought that book had some value for all of us who are particularly awkward in situations. So my challenge to you is try to take an area where you're particularly awkward. Is it talking to people you're thinking about dating or is it talking to people who are in power inside your work organization? And see if you couldn't write a small chart 
of the situations that really throw you off, what you could do better to have a good relationship with whoever's kind of making you feel awkward. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening. Please remember to subscribe to either this podcast or Small Steps with God. And you can find both of them on a network page. My friend and I own this podcast network. We're just calling it a network, but it's essentially all the podcasts we're working on together. And you can find that at thecuriousgals.com. We're planning on having, at one point, four different podcasts, but right now we have two. And you can always keep track of what podcasts are live by going to thecuriousgals.com. Or, as always, you can email me at jill at smallstepspod.com. Thanks so much and have a wonderful week.